Hey guys, I thought we'd learn about um, Ecclesiastes. This was King Solomon, and he's very wise. And Ecclesiastes is written to those who walk under the sun. And what Ecclesiastes is conveyor of truth, um, to call is what it is, and um, the Aramaic, it's Kehilit, Kehilith, and that's probably uh, pronounced wrong, but it's to call or to assemble. And 29 times it uses in these 11 chapters, 12 chapters here, to those who walk under the sun. But it's the assembler, the conveyor, and instructions on how to be happy in these flesh bodies. And vanity of all things, chapter 1. And vanity is emptiness. And King Solomon had a lot of wisdom, you guys, so that we can learn a lot from this book. God, it's, it's a pretty awesome book. It's without, you know, you got to know without God you're empty and we got two bodies. Um, that you got a flesh body and a spirit body. Chapter 1, the words of the preacher of the son David, king of Jerusalem, Solomon, Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. He's saying in, in all fleshly things, just in a fleshly standpoint, it's all empty out there. They're chasing emptiness. And just like King Solomon had all the riches in the world, but he still wasn't happy, you guys, because he needed to have God all totally in his heart. It's empty without him. It's it's vain. There's no profit. What profit has a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh. But the earth abideth forever. And this is uh, going to keep telling us how nothing's new under the sun, but we learned some neat things while we're in here also. The sun also arises. And the sun goes down and hastens to his place where it arose. It means it goes up over the horizon, down, sets, round, and comes back and does it again. It's a sure thing. Same as day in and day out. And notice this is seasons and natural things. And this verse 6 is pretty neat. And 7 about the wind. The wind goes towards the south and turns, turneth about. And into the north it whirleth and about continually. The wind returneth again, and according to his circuits, all the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full, and to the place from there the rivers come thither, and they then turn again. They go on continuously. How did they know that all rivers connected back then, see? How did they know that the circuits in the air, if you guys know about highs and lows and that swirling and that effect in verse 7, and the circuits of the wind, and see? Uh, God's way ahead. Men catch up, and, and women, and flesh understanding, but catch up, but God's always way ahead. Verse 8, all things are full of labor. Men can not utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled, filled with hearing. See, eventually, all things, it's just, it's emptiness, and we want more. It's That's the nature of the to keep going and going and going so that's why we need God he's the only one that can fulfill that void to balance us the thing that has been that is not which shall be and that which is done in that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun God made it all <laughs> I like that verse 10 is there anything whereof if may it may be said See, this is new. It has been already of old time, which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things. And this things, you guys hear, is supposed to be men. And it means people going and from generation to generation. And things are lost. And just like you guys seen all this great ancient knowledge come out. See, it was denied and it was lost. And it was there. But what they're saying is the generations go on here. So things here are men. So there is no remembrance of former men, neither shall there be any remembrance of men that are to come, which those that shall come after. And that's the translation that does that, you guys. But we just got through it. Twelve. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I gave my heart to seek 
and search out wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travaileth has God given to the sons of men to be exercised therewith. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. It's emptiness without spiritual ground. That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is one and cannot be numbered, stuck on the ways of the flesh, and and that's the only thing that can exalt in something of excitement and feel good when it's on, on a fleshly standpoint. Sins have to escalate, you guys. Without spirit, we're dead in the water because you can only go high on the things of the world before it runs out. 16. I can... I communed with mine own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. See, he's got all the wisdom, all the smarts, the strength, the power, the money. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge, and I gave my heart to know wisdom, gave his heart to it, and to know madness, gave his heart to it, and folly. I perceived that this also is vexation of spirit. It only brought him trouble. For in much wisdom is great grief, and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. Wisdom is it's it's personal in what you're doing with it in a sense. Like too when you go out and you're running through all this um, stuff out here in the world it's to know to have knowledge of it but to get to one point and you know where to keep your ground to to not jump in and indulge it but it's in all aspects in the sense guys that when you knowledge is power and it gets you in trouble and it does things to you as you learn and it, you could take things bigger on a wider array if you want to say or expanse or reach and it can get you so you know what I mean the bigger the reach the bigger the trouble you can get into if you're not um, balancing it out with spirit because people that's what they talk about power tripping and the different things and it's easy to fall off and especially when people get just like uh, in churches and different places anywhere anytime anyone's got people to wear a lot of people are coming and you got one leader, there's always that abuse of authority, you know what I mean? I don't care if it's at a store or a gas station or somewhere like that. You guys have all seen the people that they're power hungry. They got a name tag and they know how to do this and this about the store and the other workers don't. So they, they're hottie and they feel like you guys know what I'm talking about. So I just examples. I'm, I'm just trying to help here. In chapter 2, the vanity human and pleasures and this is um the band yeah the vanity of human pre pleasures and it says i said in my heart go to now i will prove thee with mirth therefore enjoy pleasures and behold this also is vanity and this about the uh one to nine here is about self-control you guys I said of laughter it is mad, and of mirth what does it? I sought my heart to give myself into wine, his own covenant, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom. And that was his comforter, he thought, and to, to lay hold on folly till I might see that was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. I made me great works, I builded me houses, I planted me vineyards, see his own grapes, his own salvation, his own works, all his own dedication, left God out, just like they're doing now, you guys, with the schools, with the word, with the education, with the the whole way that we're being led is without God, they're leaving God out of it, they're taking God out and giving in the political correctness, all things. I made me pools of water, the water thereof, the wood that bringeth forth trees, grew his own wood, his own salvation, his own trees of life, his own places to wash, got me servants and maidens and hand servants, people to do anything you wanted, and, and also had great possessions, a great small and cattle above all that was in Jerusalem before me, all things, but nothing without God. 